Did you ever hear about God's three promises to Abraham? Yes, I have. Well, maybe, kind of, well, no. <laughs> well, a long, long time ago, God promised Abraham three things. Number one, his family would become a great nation. <laughs> Number two, they would have their very own land. The promised land. <laughs> and number three, through that nation would come a blessing for the whole world. Whoa, yay! Whoa! Pretty great promises, huh? Really great promises. But then something happened. Uh oh! What? Jerusalem was destroyed, and the Israelites were stuck in Babylon, far away from the Promised Land. So, it seemed like... None, none of those promises, promises are coming true. true! Israel was supposed to be a great nation, but now they weren't a nation at all. How could a blessing for the whole world come from Israel now? We don't know! God's promises confused the Israelites living in Babylon. They wondered if these promises would still come true and if they could still trust God. Is our story over? Is this the end? Well, God knew how confused they were, so he sent the prophet Isaiah to give them one of the most important messages in the whole Bible. In the whole Bible? What was the message? It's not the end, Isaiah said. In fact, just wait till you hear what God is going to do next. Well, the Israelites were... Super excited! Yay! Why? Because Isaiah told them about... The Messiah! Wait, what's that? The Messiah? Messiah means anointed one. Samuel had anointed young David with oil, which means that he was being set apart by God for a very special job, to be king of all Israel. And now Isaiah was saying that there was another anointed one coming. A baby will be born. He will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel which means God with us. But he would also have another name. The baby would be from King David's family, and he would grow up to rule God's people forever. Wow, forever is like a really long time. It turns out the hope of the world wasn't a mighty nation or a big army. The hope of the world was going to be... A baby? <laughs> you got it! In a village called Nazareth, there was a young woman named... Mary! One day, God sent an angel to give her a special message. A special message? What was it? The angel said... You will have a son. A son? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not even married. Mary wasn't married yet, but she had promised to marry a man named... Joseph! Then the angel said something truly amazing. The baby will be a blessing for the whole world. He will be the Son of God. That's the promise they were waiting for. Yes. Mary would give birth to the Son of God, the blessing for the whole world. That's so amazing! And if you were shocked to hear about this, you can imagine what Mary must have felt like. Why, you would think she would have passed out and fallen on the floor right then. Uh. But Mary was brave. She trusted God. And she said... I am the servant of the Lord. May this happen just as you have said. 
Wow! Mary really trusted God. Yes, she did. Then the angel said, "The baby's name will be Jesus." Was this the Messiah the people had been waiting for? <laughs> you got it. I knew it. So then, what happened? Well, when it was time for the baby to be born, Joseph and Mary traveled to a place called Bethlehem. Was that a long ways away? It was, and they got there by a donkey. That must have been hard. I think so. And on top of that, when they got to Bethlehem, they suddenly needed a place for Mary to have the baby. Oh, did they look for a hospital? <laughs> they didn't have hospitals back then. What about a palace? I mean, the Son of God should be born in the best place, right? Well, they... or the best hotel? All the inns were full. So, what did they do? Since all the inns were full, Mary had her baby in. <laughs> A barn. A barn. The blessing that Israel had been awaiting for almost two thousand years was born in a. <laughs> a barn. Oh my! Mary didn't have her baby in a fancy palace or a nice warm inn. Nope. Jesus was born in a stinky, smelly barn. Next to cows and sheep and goats and chickens, the promised blessing for the whole world had finally come. God's kingdom celebrated in the most amazing way. Really? How? Like this. Angels. A whole bunch of them showed up, and they sang and celebrated the birth of the new king. King Jesus. And where do you think God's mighty angels announced the birth of His Son? Oh, I know. That's easy. They probably announced it in the biggest cities to the richest, fanciest, most important people of the whole wide world, like kings and queens. No.、Nope. Powerful generals. Guess again. Oh, really rich people? <laughs> nope. Maybe this will help. <laughs> Shepherds. Look. Shepherds. Remember that God chose a humble barn for the birth of His Son. Yeah, that is so weird. Right. I guess God doesn't do things the way we think He should. I guess not. So the angels appeared in the middle of a field outside the city. That's right. They sang to shepherds. They did. Dirty, smelly guys. Hey. With dirty, smelly sheep. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. God wanted to show how His love is for everyone, even the most gentle and lowly. Yay! <laughs> Go, you will recognize the Messiah by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in a blanket and lying in a manger. Go and see him. God showed the world His power, who He really was, not with an army, but with a baby. Not in a palace, but in a barn. Not to kings and rich people, but to us shepherds. God's rescue plan was happening. His kingdom was on the move. He was showing that His way of working. Was not going to be the way that people expected. It was going to be different. Yes, that little tiny newborn baby, born in a barn, celebrated by shepherds.
was going to turn the whole world... Whoa! Upside down! Ah. There's more? Oh, yes. Sometime later, some wise men from the east followed a bright star in the sky to Jerusalem. They were really excited. Where can we find the newborn king? We saw his star in the sky. We want to worship him. And, and bring, bring him, him gifts, gifts, too. When the people heard about a new baby king, they got really excited, too. And soon the news reached King Herod. There was already a king? King Herod. And he was ruler over all the land. Well, when he heard all the talk about a new king, he got a little worried. So he called his counselors together. Counselors! I need to know where the child king is supposed to be born. <laughs> In Bethlehem. Aha! So Herod had the wise men brought to him right away and said, As soon as you find the child, let me know because I want to worship him too. Hmm. Okay. So the wise men continued on their way, following the star. That must have been so awesome! Their very own compass in the sky! That's right. Soon the star stopped over the place where Jesus was. Ooh! We saw his star in the sky. We bring gifts fit for a king. Gold. Frankincense. Myrrh. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Wow! And then they went back to tell King Herod that they have found Jesus. Nope. What? Why not? God warned the wise men not to go back to King Herod. You see, Herod didn't really want to worship Jesus. He didn't? Not at all. Herod was jealous of the new baby king. So, after the wise men left Jesus and his family, an angel spoke to Jesus' dad, Joseph, in a dream and said, Take the baby and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, because Herod is looking for the child. Phew! So, Jesus was safe? Yes, he was. Yay! Jesus would grow up with his earthly parents in a faraway land until it was time to begin the work his heavenly father had sent him to do. Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy. By teaching them. Well, yes but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles. Wow! But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What, what are, are we going, going to do? do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes? What is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said, hmm. Why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said, Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm, and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, 
We have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Uh, how are we gonna feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> you can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. Then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus saying, My daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh no! But Jesus said, Don't worry, she's okay. And the little girl came back to life just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. We keep track of all the rules, and we're not excited at all. Yeah, Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. <laughs> the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right. And God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus, to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. It was time for Jesus and his disciples to celebrate the Passover. Passover? What is Passover? Do you remember when God sent Moses to rescue the Israelites from Egypt? Oh, yes. God sent frogs and flies and darkness and other things. It was pretty crazy. It was. God sent plague after plague, ten plagues. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. He said, no, I will not let God's people go. So it was time for Pharaoh to see just how powerful God can be. What happened next? God told Moses to have every Israelite family prepare a lamb for a special meal, and then take some of the blood from that lamb and put it over the door of their houses. Why would God tell them to do that? Because, for the last plague, 
God would send an angel to take the life of every firstborn son of the Egyptians. The angel would pass over the homes of the Israelites who had the blood of the lamb over their doors. So, the blood of the lamb saved the sons of the Israelites. And ever since that day, the Israelites have celebrated Passover with a special meal, just like the one they had that night in Egypt when the angel passed over their homes many, many years earlier. I get it now. So, Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem where many people gathered to celebrate Passover. And something very wonderful happened when he got there. Oh, really? What? As Jesus rode into the city on a donkey, a big crowd of people came to meet him. They knew who he was? Yes, they were so excited. They waved palm branches and then laid them down in front of him. That's funny. What did they do that for? It was their way of honoring Jesus. Like a welcome mat. That's so cool. And then they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! It was like a parade. A parade for a king. Everyone was so happy. Wait! 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 Stop everything! We're not happy at all. Not one teeny bit. Ah, yes, the Pharisees and Sadducees. Those religious leaders weren't happy. They were very nervous. Hey! Jesus is such a troublemaker. If the Romans hear people calling him king, they will send their soldiers to throw us in prison. We need to stop Jesus and his followers. So they came up with a secret plan to hurt Jesus. Oh no, they can't hurt Jesus. Don't worry, even this was part of God's plan. Later that night, Jesus and his disciples got together to eat the Passover meal, just like they did every year. But this year was different. During the meal, Jesus got up and washed his disciples' feet to show them what it really means to love and serve others. Then, Jesus said something that surprised them all. One of you is going to turn against me. Oh no! Why did he say that? Uh, he knew that one of them was helping the Pharisees and Sadducees. <gasps> Were the disciples surprised? For sure. They looked at each other and said, Who could it be? Jesus knew what was going to happen. He wanted to prepare his followers. So he took a piece of bread and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Then he picked up his cup and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you. What did he mean by that? What does cov... cov... Uh, covenant. What does that mean? A covenant is a promise. Many years before, God had made a covenant, a promise, to bless his people. Now, Jesus was saying that God was going to make a new covenant with them. He was going to bless them in a new way. But when he said, This is my body. This is my blood. It sounded like this new covenant had something to do with Jesus dying, and it did. What do you mean? Why would Jesus have to die? Remember when the angel in Egypt saw the blood of the lamb over the door? What did he do? Um, he passed over the house. And the people were safe. Jesus was saying that now his body and blood would save them. He was saying that he was the new Passover lamb. Whoa! The disciples could not believe their ears. Then, after dinner, Jesus took some of his disciples and went to a garden to pray. He knew what he had to do next, and he knew it was not going to be easy. After a while, he said, The hour has come. And just at that moment, one of his disciples arrived, 
leading a group of soldiers sent by the Sadducees to arrest Jesus. Which disciple was it? The disciple named Judas. Now everyone knew who had turned against Jesus. With the help of Judas, the Pharisees and Sadducees arrested Jesus. Oh no! What did they do to him? They asked him a lot of questions. Are you the Son of God? Do you think you are equal to God? Jesus didn't say anything, but the religious leaders didn't care if he answered or not. They accused him anyway. He is guilty of blasphemy! 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 Blasphemy? What does that even mean? Blasphemy is when someone says untrue things about God. The Pharisees and Sadducees accused Jesus of saying he was God. According to the Pharisees and Sadducees, there was only one way a person could pay for that. What was it? Going to jail? No, death. No! There was a problem for the Pharisees and Sadducees, though. What? Even if the Pharisees and Sadducees said Jesus was guilty, they weren't allowed to kill anyone. Only Roman leaders could do that. So they took him to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Wait, what? Pancho the Pilate? Not a Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And when he saw Jesus and his accusers, he was a little confused. <laughs> Are they upset? <laughs> what have you done that has made everyone so angry? Again, Jesus didn't say anything. So Pilate turned to the religious leaders and said, I don't see anything wrong with this man. Well, according to our rules, he needs to die. Now, Pilate had a problem. Hmm, Jesus doesn't deserve to die. But, but if he gets more popular, I don't want the Pharisees and Sadducees to complain about me to the other Roman leaders. So, what did he do? He thought there was only one way to keep his job as Roman governor. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, bring me some water. I wash my hands of this situation. This is not my fault. So, Pilate ordered that Jesus be killed on a wooden cross. Because... According to our laws, he deserves to die. <gasps> that is so sad. Jesus didn't deserve to die on the cross. No, he didn't. But he went to the cross anyway. And as he was dying, he continued to show love and mercy by saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The sky turned very dark, and Jesus said, It is finished. Jesus died. Then the ground began to shake, and a Roman guard standing nearby said, this man must have been the Son of God. But where were the disciples? All of Jesus' friends. His mother was with him, and a few of his friends. The others probably didn't know what to think. How could Jesus be the Messiah, the blessing for the whole world, if he wasn't even alive? Jesus had done some amazing things while he was living. Like lots of miracles. That's right! Stop! And he'd shown everyone that God the Father was very loving and good and powerful. He had also promised that the kingdom of God was near. He'd given everyone a taste of that kingdom through those miracles. What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is when the whole world will be made new again the way God had always wanted it to be. Jesus promised that someday, in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin or sadness or sickness or death. What is sin again? Sin is when we ignore God and go our own way. 
Sin is when we say, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it my way. And remember, because God is good and sin is bad, the price we pay for our sin is being apart from God. Oh, so in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin or sadness or sickness. In the kingdom of God, there will be nothing to be afraid of, not even death. But Jesus had just died. Ah, so it seemed like none of those promises were coming true. But that was not the case. Really? What do you mean? You see, something more amazing was happening that Jesus' enemies didn't realize. When he died on the cross, Jesus took all of our sin on himself. He did? You see, since our sin turns us away from God, there can be no sin in the kingdom of God. So, Jesus had to fix the problem of sin. And he did that by dying on the cross? Yes. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Yours, mine, everyone's. Wow! Jesus really loves us. He sure does. But... Another question? What about all the things that he said about the kingdom? I still don't get it. If Jesus was dead, how could any of those promises come true? That's a really good question. The sun had gone down, and it was time to bury him. Only his mom and a few friends were there. You remembered. So what did they do? They got help from a man. I am Joseph from Arimathea, a follower of Jesus. I am very sad that Jesus has died. I have been waiting for the kingdom he spoke of to come. I want to do something nice for him, to show Jesus how much I loved him. So Joseph did something special. He went to Pontius Pilate. I want to take care of Jesus' body. I want to give him a grave. All right, go ahead. Now, when important people died in Israel, they were not buried in the ground. Really? No, their bodies were placed in special tombs that were carved out of solid rock. Do you mean like a cave? Like a small cave. Well, Joseph had one that he was going to use someday, but guess what? He decided to give it to Jesus. So, Jesus' body was placed inside Joseph's tomb, and then a big rock was rolled in front of the cave, so no one could get in. And then... Someone is here to see you, Pilate. Oh, it's you again. Yup, we're back! You didn't think we'd give up that easily, did you? <sighs> What do you want? Look, Jesus said that he would come back from the dead. And? Well, what if his friends go to the tomb, move the rock, and take his body and then say, Jesus is alive? Hmm. That would cause a lot of trouble for you, Pilate. Hmm, I never thought of that. So Pilate put guards outside the tomb to make sure no one moved the rock. Eyes peeled. We don't want anyone to move this rock. Yeah, no one's gonna get past us. No, sir. Wow, so the Pharisees and the Sadducees were still worried about Jesus? Yep. You see, when Jesus was alive, he said, In three days, I will rise from the dead. Well, Jesus had died and was buried on a Friday. That's day one. All day Saturday, his body lay in Joseph's tomb with the guards keeping watch. That was day two? Right. So Sunday morning comes around. Day three. 
and two women who were Jesus' friends made their way to the tomb to put spices and perfume on his body, because that was something that people did in those days. When all of a sudden... Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened? What happened? An earthquake shook the ground, and an angel appeared. <laughs> the angel rolled away the rock. When the women arrived, there lay the two soldiers, passed out on the ground. There lay the rock, and there, well, there was no Jesus. <gasps> Don't be afraid. Oh, uh, okay. I know you're looking for Jesus, but he isn't here. He has risen, just like he said he would. Jesus is alive. What? What? The women were so excited. They wanted to go tell their other friends what happened, when suddenly... Don't be afraid. Jesus showed up? He sure did. No way! Yes way. Later, Jesus appeared to all his disciples. He explained to them why he had to die. He told them the great news that death has no power in God's kingdom. And then, when it was time for him to leave, he said, From now on, you will be the ones telling others about my kingdom. I will send you a helper who will fill you with the power of God. You will do amazing things. And then, Jesus rose up into the sky. Amazing! The disciples were very excited. They didn't really know what would happen next, but they knew one thing. Jesus was sending them a helper who would help them in a mighty big way. Did you love that video? Hit subscribe or ask your parents to download the Middle Kids app.